SpaceX's biggest achievement so far is without a doubt developing Starship. It's not only the largest rocket ever built, but also one of the most advanced spacecraft humanity has ever attempted to create. But as impressive as it sounds, many of the things SpaceX promises with Starship still exist mostly in theory. Turning those ideas into reality has been far more difficult than most people imagine. Recently, SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell made a very bold statement about Starship's future that left the entire space community surprised. And in today's video, we're going to break down exactly what she said and what it means. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates on SpaceX, Starship, and the future of space exploration. Although SpaceX has already revolutionized the rocket industry by reusing its Falcon 9 boosters, those rockets are only partially reusable, meaning the upper stage is still discarded after every launch. Starship changes everything. It's designed to be fully reusable, from its massive Super Heavy booster to the Starship upper stage itself. In theory, both stages will launch, land, and fly again multiple times dramatically reducing the cost of reaching orbit. Some people even compare it to airplanes. But making that a reality is far from simple. Even landing Starship's massive booster is one of the hardest challenges SpaceX has ever faced. Unlike the Falcon 9, which has nine engines, Super Heavy has 33 Raptor engines firing simultaneously. That's an enormous amount of thrust and vibration to control. During landing, those engines have to restart precisely at the right time, throttle perfectly, and guide a 70-meter tall booster weighing hundreds of tons onto a small launch pad. The booster doesn't have landing legs like Falcon 9 either. Instead, SpaceX plans to catch it mid-air using two giant mechanical arms attached to the launch tower, known as Makazilla. A few meters off target and the entire vehicle could be lost. But what's even more terrifying is that landing Starship isn't even the hardest part of its future missions. The real challenge lies in something called orbital refueling, a technology that will determine whether Starship can actually reach the Moon and Mars. Here's why it's so important. When Starship reaches low Earth orbit after launch, it still doesn't have enough fuel to go any farther. Even with the most powerful rocket engines ever made, Starship can only carry a fraction of the propellant it needs to leave Earth's orbit, land on the moon, and come back. To complete those long journeys, it has to refuel in space, just like airplanes refueling mid-air, except a thousand times more complicated. The plan is for one Starship acting as a tanker to transfer its fuel to another Starship waiting in orbit. But doing this in space is incredibly difficult. There's no gravity, so the liquid fuel doesn't settle at the bottom of the tanks like it does on Earth. It floats around in blobs. It gets even trickier because Starship uses cryogenic propellants, liquid methane and liquid oxygen, that must stay extremely cold, around minus 170 degrees Celsius. If they warm up even slightly, they start to boil off, turning into gas and building pressure that could damage the tanks. So SpaceX has to find a way to pump thousands of liters of this freezing fuel between two massive spacecraft, while both are orbiting Earth at 27,000 kilometers per hour. And this isn't a one-time operation. NASA estimates that it could take 10 to 16 separate tanker launches to fully refuel a single Starship for a moon mission. Now, coming back to our main topic, Gwynne Shotwell's recent statement really caught everyone's attention. She said that SpaceX expects to successfully perform orbital refueling by 2026. That's a huge claim, because even NASA, with decades of experience, hasn't been able to do this on a large scale. She confirmed that the company plans to conduct one more flight with the current Starship version before testing the upgraded version 3, which will include all the systems needed for future crewed missions, including propellant transfer. Shotwell even joked, saying she hopes it's not as hard as some of my engineers think, but she acknowledged that it's one of the most complex challenges they've ever faced. Now the question is, is it really possible by 2026? On paper, Yes, but it's going to take an incredible amount of progress in a very short time. But if we look at the company's track record, there's also a clear pattern. 
Musk and SpaceX are often overly optimistic about their timelines. This isn't the first time we've heard bold predictions. Back in 2016, Musk said that SpaceX would send humans to Mars as early as 2024. In 2019, he claimed Starship could begin orbital flights by 2020. Then the target for a lunar landing shifted to 2022, then 2024, and now, at best, 2026 or later. Part of the issue is Musk's tendency to aim aggressively high. He pushes his teams to work faster than any traditional aerospace company, which leads to rapid innovation. But it also means deadlines often slip. Starship's development history shows this clearly. The first few prototypes exploded during testing. Even the most recent flight, while much improved, wasn't fully successful. The booster didn't make a controlled landing. Yes, it was progress, but still far from the precision required for orbital refueling or human spaceflight. And that's what makes Shotwell's statement so surprising. Orbital refueling is the most complex space operation ever attempted. For one lunar mission, SpaceX can't just launch a single starship. It has to launch an entire fleet. First, there's a fuel depot starship that will serve as the orbital gas station. Then, between 8 and 16 tanker starships will need to launch one by one, each carrying about 150 tons of cryogenic propellant, liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Only after all those tanker flights succeed can the HLS starship, the one designed to land astronauts on the moon, launch and refuel from the depot. Then, it can finally begin its journey to lunar orbit. That's at least a dozen separate launches, all perfectly timed and all requiring flawless vehicle performance. If one tanker launch is delayed or fails, the entire chain could be disrupted. At the moment, SpaceX hasn't demonstrated it can even fly one Starship mission to orbit and recover it successfully. To put this in perspective, NASA's Apollo program sent astronauts to the moon with a single rocket, the Saturn V. It required one launch, one spacecraft, and a direct trajectory. Starship's plan, in contrast, depends on over 10 successful launches for a single mission to even begin. Each launch is another chance for failure. The only part of this whole process that SpaceX can handle with some level of confidence is the docking part because it's something they've already mastered through years of operating their Dragon spacecraft. SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Cargo Dragon capsules regularly dock with the International Space Station, often with little to no human intervention. As Dragon approaches the International Space Station, it relies on a suite of advanced navigation systems to determine its exact position and orientation relative to the station. SpaceX has successfully completed dozens of these automated dockings, and this experience gives them a significant advantage. Of course, scaling up means new challenges. The ISS docking ports are designed for relatively small spacecraft weighing around 13 tons. Starship, on the other hand, will weigh hundreds of tons even when empty. That's an entirely different scale of precision and force. Still, the core technology, sensors, autopilot algorithms, and control systems, already exists and has been proven reliable through years of operation. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.